Welcome to Board Game Archaeologist, where we play time-worn games from the past. I'm Hunter. I'm Rob. And today we're looking at Mastermind. Mastermind from 1972 by Invictus Plastics. This is a game that came out back when I was young, and I remember having this in our family for many, many years. It's for two players only, and you'll see more about it. The goal of the game is that one player will set up a code of uh, characters here, and then the other person needs to figure out what their original code is. Yep, and it comes with this cool board. It comes with a little hiding thing, so when you win or you can pull it up or lose, um, you can pull that up. It comes with six different colors and black and white pegs. And essentially, when you lay out your pegs, the person will then kind of clue you in, similar to Battleship, into details with the pegs. So the white ones will mean that you have a color correct in your row, and a black one means that there's a color correct and it's in the right place. Yep, but you don't have to, you know, give any in instigations by where that black one or white one is in, in the way you put it. You can change that around anytime you want. And essentially, you're just trying to throw people off and keep it so that it takes them more rounds to figure out your code than it takes them to figure out yours. Yep. Um, I, I kind of think it's a lot like Hangman, where you're given so many opportunities to guess the color and the sequence. And when you start looking at it, you can start figuring out a strategy and a logic pretty good with this. I think that's why we liked it when we were young, um, was because it was something that you really could kind of figure out and you could kind of get good at it. Yeah, and I really like the the battleship element of not really kind of knowing what you're dealing with and, like, not really being sure when you place down pegs, like, what color it is. I think it's really interesting because even when we played before, it would be a situation where you'd break down and you'd go, wait a second, like, are you thinking about all of this? Like, the logic change just does not add up. Right. And so it's a very interesting kind of like a uh, play style. And the six colors instead of four make it a little more difficult because two of them aren't on there at all. So you keep bringing them in thinking they're the good one, but they're not. But it keeps reading kind of like it is. And you're given two, four, six, eight, ten tries. And if you don't win by that, that time, then I guess the person with the colors win. Or you could probably keep score and see how many turns it takes you. And then the next turn would be how many turns it would take you. And there's a million ways you could probably figure out different scoring systems on this game. The cool thing about it, all the instructions are just this little paragraph right here. And uh, the game is cool. It's got a design that makes it feel very international. Yeah, but if it takes you more than 10 guesses, though, you're not as sophisticated as that guy. He is a cool dude. Well, we'll see you next time. Yeah, and if you want to know more about us, check us out at toyarchaeology.com. You can always find us on Facebook, and don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.